Hello, we are here with Midtown Tribune News covering the town meeting which took place on March 1st at Beach Haven and Gravesend, hosted by Councilman Eric Hagan. Representatives of local government agencies came together for a meeting conducted by Eric Hagan to hear about the concerns of the 47th District and other boroughs and to answer questions by Brooklyn residents. In the large auditorium at 216 Avenue X School, representatives from DOT, Sanitation Department, HPD, Department of Parks, NYCHA, DOB, NYPD, MTA, Community Board 13, and Gravesend Library address concerns regarding living conditions in their district, such as sanitation problems in the neighborhood, poor conditions at West Playground, abandoned cars on Avenue Z, problems at Marlboro houses, homelessness, lack of streetlights, pedestrian safety, and many other issues. Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm Councilman Larry King. I'm Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being here. It's a town hall for Gregson and the Shadow. We distributed about 2,000 files. We made a lot of calls. Where is that? We have another event at the same time in the neighboring district. So we are not going to make any more of You are here, so you are my friend, okay? And the most important. So first of all, I would like to announce everyone to answer questions. First of all, I would like to acknowledge my staff. Jimmy Kirinetti, my chief of staff. Ayana Dimitris is the uh, director of constituent services, Ayana. Yeah. And as I see, Erika Turner, uh, community resident, special events coordinator, Angel Fang. Thank you, community resident. Uh, Leo Moses, community resident, also assistant director of constituent services. Uh, Ajay Tervisi, budget director, legislative director, Ajay Tervisi. Thank you so much, Ajay. So, uh, we don't have one person from our staff tonight, Yuri Yaroslavsky, but she's always helping us with all the decision issues as well. Uh, now, let's go over all the agencies. Thank you so much for coming. I know it's a busy night, and thank you. I really, really appreciate you being here. Truly appreciate it. So, let's start from the right side. Sure, so my name is Gregory Kersep. I serve as Chief of Staff for Assembly Member Michael Novikov in the 45th District. And uh, happy to be here. Thank, Thank you so much. Assembly uh, Member Novikov represents Graves and Kennedy Sharon. So, thank you for coming here. He's on his Chief of Staff, yes. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Pamela? Okay, give her. Okay. Good evening, my name is Claudette Workman. I'm the Deputy Borough Commissioner for the New York City Department of Transportation. Yay. Transportation. Okay. I'm also very loud without the mic. My name is Pam Blazer, and I work for the New York City Housing Department, HPD. HPD, thank you so much. Hello, my name is William Simonelli. I'm a Deputy Chief for the New York City Sanitation and Public Health. Thank you. Citywide Community Affairs Officer in the New York City Department of Sanitation. Thank you very much. Sanitation. So, today we have an opportunity to ask the questions, not to win, to serve me first or to serve you first, we will then make you respond. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, folks. My name is Lawrence Major. I'm the Regional Manager for Brooklyn South and New York City Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Nicolai Gashin from NYCHA. Good evening, everyone. I'm Shirley Funk, Second Legislative Coordinator at NYCHA. Yay! Shirley is one of the most responsive people in city government. You know, when they send care of that, she responds to the road. I cannot trust you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vladimir Edward, Department of Buildings. Department of Buildings. Thank you so much. Also, thank you. Uh, my name is Eddie Clark, and I'm with Community Board 13. I'm the district manager. Thank you. And I see Jana Hanin from Brooklyn Paper Bay News. Thank you so much for coming. And we have Russian Television Network of America. I see Alex Arby. I know we have been international. And uh, here from the uh, Pakistan administration, we have Christopher Drive. He represents 
many organizations, but mostly known as a disability rights advocates, and to, to my is representing NTA. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. And of course, we have our fantastic uh, police department. I see from every angle. So, first of all, I see Sister's Precinct. Thank you so much for coming. And PSC Ryan also thank you so much. And I believe we will, yes, thank you so much for PSC Ryan and your sister's prison. I believe we have someone from 61st prison as well. So if anybody has questions about public safety, please let us know. Okay, we will start. I will do a very brief few minutes of presentation myself, and then we will be open to questions. Because the whole point of this exercise is for you to ask questions. To me, to my staff, to all agencies, that's the whole purpose. Okay? So, I already mentioned the council of Mary Kay. We have three offices, two offices in South of Brooklyn, and one office in Manhattan. In Brooklyn, one of our offices is 445 Neptune Avenue, which is in Warmers, by the way, so I can see them here. President of Warmers House, thank you so much for coming. Second office is 2015 Steelville Avenue. So, the primary cover of Dancing with Best Beach, Gravesington. So, helping everyone as well. And in Manhattan is 250 Broadway, of course, on 18th floor, we have a legislative office, especially when we're in City Hall. We often work from there. But of course, we prefer to work here in South and Brooklyn. This is our home. By the way, I'm a great surprise to myself. I live about two minutes from the school, 388 X. So, obviously, I want to say that I live here. So. And thank you so much for coming. I see many community leaders. I saw Dr. Tim Wong here. Thank you, Dr. Tim Wong, for coming. I see the member of Bolchow. I live in the club. Thank you so much. I will announce, I see Andrew Ferrer, President of Marbury Resident Association. Thank you very much for coming. Olga Fiore, representing State Senator Jessica Scorsella's Thank you, Olga, for all these company communities of South Africa. Thank you very much. Okay. So, again, I said this open mic. Few questions that the council will ask me on a regular basis. So, I will ask right now, right away, right on the spot. So, we did about Kalekison. I'm not sure whether, whether they will come, but maybe DOT will help us. So, right now this enemy X, we have uh, one issue related to street lights, specifically. Um, on enemy X and East 2nd Street, I know I was going to ask you specifically about this. Do you want to ask this question? Please. Ooh, I got to get on the mic for that. Yes, go to the mic. Hey, how are you, everybody? I'm just a resident of the district, and I know this for a very, very long time. Between X and Second Street, a light hasn't been working in ages. I've seen a lot of overkill and a lot of loose car parts, so I was going to ask councilman uh, if there's anything we can do to make our streets live in there. You were very close to the microphone, so I don't want to say. And in X is Second Street. It's dark, especially the evening. even now, it's very dark. So light of it doesn't work. So what about DOT? Is it DOT or what is it? Are with DOT? Both, okay. So we do not have our lighting unit come out to take a look to see what's going on. If it's foundation work, we're going to have to reach out to Con Edison. Once they actually, if it's do conduit work or something like that, we will have them do their repairs, they send it back to us, and then we'll do our portion of it, which is usually the foundation work, and then they um, wire it to get the lights work. So I'm not sure about the location and what's actually going on, but I will find out. Yeah. Avenue X, corner of East 2nd Street, yeah. there are three issues over there. One is the light, it's dark. Second is that because of some construction or reconstruction, I don't know, it's a proposed type to gather now over there. And also it's a sign, East 2nd, that's DOT. Also, sign is now, uh, doesn't look pretty, I would say. So there's construction going on there now? Something, something going on like that. It started like about one month ago, and they, they, before it was only one pole. Now it's two poles combined, plus no light, and plus something with the same side. It's all in the same corner. Okay. Right. And the X is set. Okay. We'll okay? You will check. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you
I believe you also have a, a grape supplier in here, correct? Hi. Yeah. Could you introduce yourself, please? A uh, 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 summary, you said? Just introduce Hi. yourself. Hi, I'm, I'm Erica Spellman. I work in the Gravesend branch of the Brooklyn Public Library, which is right down the street. And um, I put some calendars and flyers about what's going on at the library on the table out front. Um, Councilmember Kagan has been very helpful to the library and you came and met with us a couple of times and presented us with money for, uh, for the library, so we're very thankful for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Fantastic moments for kids, for seniors, for parents, for everyone. And in different languages as well. So please use the National Library. It's very close to this place. It is a great school. Anyway. Okay, I see Sergei from City Controller's Office. Hi, Sergei. Thank you for coming. So, if you want to ask questions about claims against City, <laughs> that's okay. I'm joking. Okay. Um, also, about parks, since we have parks here, a lot of questions about any music park, so be careful. So, conditions of the park, etc. So, could you say a few words about this park? Pull up my own cheat sheet for one second. <laughs> uh, but while well, I do that, there are a lot of good things that happen in the park. As you know, the park in a long time hasn't really seen any capital improvements in over 20 years. Um, and of course, the biggest thing to say is hasn't seen a bathroom in over 40 years since the original park. But the good news is that we actually have funding in place for the bathrooms. We have roughly about nearly $3 million that was secured by the local city council member. Uh, we're currently in design right now. At this point, we're, when we finish up the design sometime in late spring, uh, we're looking forward to some point sometime in the fall. Once the job is out for bid and registered, we should hopefully be breaking ground at that point. Hopefully, the weather's nice enough to invite yourself, the councilman, out to uh, celebrate that moment. Generally, projects take uh, roughly about one year or so to get done. So, we're hoping by, by the following spring or we'll mid summer of the following year. Everyone's going to get a public bathroom back that they haven't seen in such a long time, and the public is going to enjoy that most. Um, so that's one of the things. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers, long short of it. Uh, that's one thing that parks always needs is extra hands and eyes and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do in that park that, you know, if anyone in the public wants to come out, so if you're interested, reach out to the council member's office or reach out to parks and, and We'll get you and yourself and anyone else, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, anyone who's looking for do community service. You know, we're always welcome in any part, not just not just in the West Coast. Okay, questions? Or, yes. yes. A uh, few questions about the park. Sure. Number one, it isn't every single park. No, it's West Coast. Well, most folks prefer to have a museum, but the common name is West Coast. That's correct. A number of complaints were issued to the park. Uh, in fact, there's a few people here who issued that. Here's the number one complaint. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. So everybody will do it. Every day, there are three school buses that pull up there, and their children occupy the hall. During the day, Okay, it's become a dog. There are diseases that can be passed on from dog room. At night, it's a dog festival, barking and everything. Now here's the major complaint. Okay, a couple of the supervisors were there. I myself and a few people here have approached them. And they said, you know, what could you do about this situation? And they tell us we're gonna go back. That's not, well, that's, not, that's not true. Oh, okay. And you're aware of all the dog manure all around the park, all around the playground? Absolutely, because it's it not just the cell phone expressing that. We get those calls from the place with 311. Okay. I've observed the buses to myself and I know who they are, and we reach out to them. That's what I mean. They listen to us. So here's an official notice from the box department placed on each vicinity around the park. There are no dogs allowed. That's correct. So why haven't we taken action to remove these dogs? And why are we putting the children 
from these schools that, that go there at risk. If you're not removing the doors, if you're not selling the safety, then you're also not helping those children. Understand, but what? Let, let, let's deal with the dog issue first. Uh, that is something that, and, and when I speak to folks, we do give them contact information if you want. Sometimes it's anonymous, but we'll take it anyway. It's, it's identifying which most times we have in the past of when folks do that. And most commonly, it's usually, it starts, they say, between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. in the morning. Folks walk their dogs, usually before they go to work and stuff. And then more commonly, after 6 o'clock and into the evening, whether it's day or night, those are the hours that we, you know, when we give the information for law enforcement to go out there and do that and to target it, um, that's one of the things they're looking for. Okay. And in some cases, they usually they, they start from education and then follows it by summons when, when they don't see any type of compliance. And, and it basically, in folks, this happens with all rules and regulations. It's a catch me if you can policy. Okay. So most of what happens is when they see other vehicles, we're not doing it undercover. When they see other vehicles pull up, just like on the beach portal, everyone gets honest. Put their doors in the leash and everyone looks like they're doing what they're supposed to do until they go. They're not allowed in the park with the doors No, they're, they're not allowed in the park. Okay, so here's my question to you. In the last three years, we have something to on the last three years, how have you addressed this situation in West Street Playgrounds? Have you issued any education? Have you issued any something? I can tell you for a fact. I don't have to speak to the man, the, the borough captain on that, because I do not have those numbers. Those numbers are not provided not to me. Not saying that it doesn't happen. Nothing but, has been done. But yet, you put these children, these groups of bus children in there. Well, that's the answer, yes, I am not putting those folks in there. Those buses, unfortunately, have been coming from local. They have uh, no they they have they have the permits. They don't have permits. Yes, they do. No, they don't. It makes for the ball. No, they don't. So I've been there and I've spoken to them and I've reached out to the operators and stuff. And unfortunately, they're doing things that if I was a parent and my kid were enrolled in a program at some local facility and they're taking them out to public parks and places without, without parents to spread or, 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 or sign offs, that's a bad thing. But do you know that exists? Do I know that what exists? I don't I don't get really involved with policy with how these places, you know, manage to okay. take the kick. The only thing I'm enforcing is policy that when you have a group of 20 or more, especially if it's a daycare or a summer camp or an after school program, they must have park permits in order to do that. And they need to do that. No, you don't. They come free wheel and they come eighty four buses at a time, eighty-four students, six chaperones, they're there roughly for about an hour at a time and they all do themselves. But there are two that have to put it right out front, they I don't go by when the bus is available. I go by what whoever's willing enough to give me the information. And that took a very long time because when you just walk up to the, to the shop rooms and you start talking to them, there's a language barrier, or they don't want to give you information because they know they're not supposed to be here in the first place. Okay, so my last question. But I mind who they want, or who they want. to address the situation with the door. That again, I will speak, as I mentioned earlier before, I will speak with the park enforcement. I will give them the hours of what we've, what we've known in the past, when people were there with their doors, whether it's the early morning or the late evening, and have them deal with the enforcement. And if they can give us some results of, of, of who they either educated or who they summoned, you know, I will share that with the councilman's office once that's provided. But you're right. I mean, oh, this, this is the one, this is not just this, this has been going on for years. Oh, without a doubt. I can put the door to the rest. If you know who's coming out on the bus, on the first street. I have a door. It's a continuous situation that is ongoing until today has not been addressed. It's not that it's being addressed. And I'm not going to get into the logistics of why people are breaking laws and the minimal or the minimal body of life laws. People say we're not enforcing, but it's just not being recognized. Okay, anymore. well, I thank you. I thank you for your insight. You're welcome. Thank you for your vision. Let the public know what you know. I say, I put a dog in his pants. Well, my first read over there, so folks can, they can take their pants out. The good folks who walk and curb their doors, put this stuff and put it on the car. So, but thank you. Thank you. And could you please give your information to Ms. Ayala or Ms. My staff, if they have the police, any other stuff, leave your information, your time information. We will follow up as far as the bottom. I will visit the gate park at different times. I have not been there many times, but I will visit the gate to see what's going on. Yes, Dr. Silva. Uh, Mr. Majors, can you hear me?
Oh, I could get out here. I could get out. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll get out. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I gotta be careful. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, I talked to you before about the past. Oh, now I can't hear. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I talked to you before about the past, several parts. Yes. I live in the community about 50 years. Now we have a lot of problems in the past. I just talked to you before. The first day I was sitting there doing exercise in the park every single morning, including myself, putting tight in here. Every single morning. The problem is the bathroom is not open. The, the, this is very, very terrible. We had a cut sword out of nowhere. I had to walk far, far away go to the bathroom. That's the number one. Number two, the people gamble in the park. Gamble. I read this by myself. I'm sorry, say that last part again. Gamble. Oh, okay. Yeah, gamble. Yeah. Yep. I read this by myself. They put a lot of gas on the table. $300, $400, $500 on the table. That's illegal. Okay. Another issue is smoke. They're not supposed to smoke in the park. Yeah. And also this morning, I had a meeting with the police officer. Somebody smoked by the bottom. There's a smell. It's very, very bad. So if you have any sign, tell them don't smoke in the park. Don't get more in the park. Please open the back home for our seniors. Okay? Oh yeah, please help us. Because we use this park a lot every single morning. Please help us. Okay. Open the seniors too. Okay? Yeah. And just to reiterate what we talked about outside, what you just mentioned now. Uh, the illegal gambling, which is a sign for U.S. at the last town hall meeting we put in place. Uh, I've had part enforcement to deal with illegal gambling. Uh, I had to order new signs because the moment we started enforcing it, people were destroying or vandalizing the signs on the outside. So now I'm ordering new signs because some of the signs got destroyed or walked away. So we messed around with them. In uh, regards to the bathroom, I wasn't aware of that. I will, I will actually call one of my folks tonight. And they'll let me know if there's a reason why the woods bathroom was closed, but you know, that's a surprise to me. No, normally when something's shut, I should know about it. That will be one day, almost every single day, not open, okay? Every okay. single day. Please check in there. No, no, you're right. It should, it should be open seven days a week, 365. I mean, I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, you know, um, and, and then the other issue was the, uh, I'm sorry. Smoking. Oh, the smoke. Smoking in the park? Again, as I mentioned before, it's a horrible catch me if camp policy. It's, when we look for that, it's not just cigarettes, it's vaping and everything else that applies under the New York City laws. That's just what we have to to, which is already on the sign. So, you know, we, we will do our best. You know, part of us was letting go when they went out to do other issues. Someone went around and vandalized the sign, so we're going to replace them so they can use that as an enforcement tool. I could call you in the future. I don't call you. You can call me, you can email me, anywhere you want. I don't call you every single day. <laughs> That's all right, I'm only there Monday. Thank you. Okay, I would like to give a chance to say a few words to Gregory Kirsten from uh, Assemblyman Michael Novaka for some uh, brief legislative update. Yeah, that's a very brief. Can you all hear me or need the mic? No, the mic. The mic. Uh, hold on, it's a pleasure for us to be here. I've met some of our folks that you didn't see yesterday uh, previously. Um, so the, the big update okay. is that our office is now officially open. So we are uh, we are over on Sheepshead Bay, uh, 11 to 6 every day by appointment on Saturday. So please bring us your concerns, bring us your questions, we can assist. Uh, we want to make sure that we are. So call us any day, and we hope to see you uh, for an office opening on the agenda soon. Thank you so much, guys. So our office is over at 1800 Sheepshead Bay Road. So it's the same office as the, as the, uh, as the uh, our predecessor. Uh, we take that over, so you know, we thought that would be best if uh, since folks know what that is. Yeah, exactly, 1800 Sheepshead Bay Road, so we hope to see you there. Thank you. Okay, I have a question regarding sanitation. So, uh, particularly on the next specifically, I know, by the way, for the record, it's not just sanitation who cleans up our streets, at least in our district. We also have one cat services. We also sometimes have volunteers that come. And it's in the case of Coney Island, on Merlin Lane, we know also Alliance for Coney Island also involved in cleaning our streets. So sometimes three or four organizations clean, and it's still not enough. But still, a lot of complaints are. 
every next best thing, every, uh, uh, all around every next, we get a lot of complaints on, 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 on sanitation conditions. Sometimes it's businesses, but sometimes it's just regular journal. Could you elaborate?